Welcome to Faber Cadabra Embroidery Edition. Today we're going to be working the blanket stitch as well as some of its variations. I'm going to begin my blanket stitch on the left side of my line, which you are looking at in a horizontal manner. I'm pulling up from the back and then I'm going to count over one stitch length and then go up. And that's where I'm gonna put in my needle to go behind the fabric. Okay, now I'm gonna pull that through until I've created a little bit of a loop. And then I'm going to go down to the line directly underneath that last point. And I'm gonna pull that taut, and that creates sort of like a backward, a wonky backwards L. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna count over one stitch length, and then I'm gonna go up from that, push my needle through, Create a little, let it create a little loop, and then push up on the point underneath that on the line. And this can be both a decorative stitch and a functional stitch. Uh, it's called the blanket stitch because it's often used to finish the edges of blankets. But as I said, it could also just simply be decorative. Now I've made one of my, uh, my L's a little bit longer. And then the next one I'm gonna make a little bit shorter than the first two that I did. And you can make this into a pattern and just keep repeating it, or you can keep everything even, it's up to you. And that's the blanket stitch. So next up is the alternate, alternating blanket stitch. <laughs> so I've moved my lines up a little bit and uh, we're gonna start just like we did for the blanket stitch. It's much the same thing, except it's gonna alternate top and bottom. So above the line and below the line, or side of the line to the other side of the line. So I came up from the back, count one stitch length over, go up, put my needle through, form my loop, come back in at a point on the line directly below the top point and create my little backward L. Try not to pull it too tight, otherwise the fabric puckers. Okay, and so the next one is actually gonna go below the line or to the, to the right side of the line. So I push it over, go one stitch length over, and then go up, or go down. <laughs> uh, push your needle through, and then come up at a point on the line directly below that creating an upside down L. And then you're just gonna keep alternating side to side or top to bottom, whichever way you're uh, doing your stitching. And I'm sorry if my camera work is a bit shaky. Uh, I think I was having a shaky hand part of my day when I film this uh, so you know next time I film I'll try not to do it on a shaky hand day <laughs> okay so you can see the nice alternating between those two kind of kind of makes it look like barbed wire to me so um, that's another name we could call it instead of the alternating blanket stitch we could call it a barbed wire stitch when you get to the end of your line you know, okay, we're gonna do one more. Okay, when you get to the end of it, you just put it through the end and then, um, and then do a little tack down stitch. Now we're gonna try the sloping blanket stitch. And this one I had a hard time with, so please forgive. It's gonna be really wonky. 
but you'll get the idea. It's the same as the blanket stitch, except you're going to go at an angle. So instead of straight up, you're going to angle it. So that's what I'm doing here. I've gone over a stitch length and then I've angled my needle to the side. And I'm going to put my needle through to the back, form my little loop. And then to create more of an angle, the closer you are to that first, um, that first point in your L, <clears throat> the more of a slant you'll have. So that's not a, a great slant, but you can still see that it's more slanted than the one above it. Okay. And you can also do this as an alternating. So it could be a sloping and alternating blanket stitch. But you can also just keep it straight. So that's just alternating. I mean, sloping blanket stitch. So here's my second one. And I created another slight slant. As you can see here. So now I'm going to try for a third one and I'm going to try and get it a little bit more slanted. I'm going to the back, created my loop, and then I'm going to come in really close to that previous stitch along the line. And I'm going to show you, oh, and there we go. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Lastly, we have the blanket pinwheel. As the name implies, this is going to be very circular. It's going to be wheel-like in that it's, it's circular and has spokes in the middle. I've uh, started, I've drawn a circle, and I've started at any point on my circle that I wanted, coming up from the back and then going down through the middle and creating a little loop. And then I'll go over one stitch length and I'm gonna come up from the back along the line, that one stitch length, and then I'm gonna go through my loop and pull that taut. Okay, and there's the first spoke in my pinwheel. And then I'm gonna go over another stitch length to the middle. Well, actually, basically, I'm just going to go through the middle, <laughs> create myself another little loop. And then along the outline of the circle, I'm going to go one stitch length over and come up from the back. Then push my needle through the through the loop I made and pull that taut again. The first time I ever tried this, uh, I had so much difficulty because I just didn't understand how to work it. But I find it actually very simple now and pretty quick and easy to do. So now I've sped this up a little bit. And this is another way of doing it where I just come in from the middle. So I go down and then push my needle underneath to the point I want it at on the outline of the wheel. And then pull it taut through the loop. And I'm just going to keep working this all the way around. I, uh, again, I've sped this up so it's a little bit fast, but you can still see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, sometimes the fabric gets caught in your loops. Just take your time and, and work it out. So always starting in the middle and then coming off to the side for each subsequent new spoke in our wheel. Okay, so now I've got just uh, one more spoke I'm gonna make. Uh, then I'm going to do a tiny stitch to the side. So I've pulled that through, made that last spoke. I'm just going to go one stitch length over to close my circle. And 
and and it's it's the tiniest little stitch length it doesn't take much and now I have closed my circle and that is the blanket pinwheel thanks for watching and happy sewing